Welcome to the Coaches on Caffeine podcast, where we help you to take absolute ownership and reach for excellence in your life. One strength coach, one performance manager, sharing our experiences. Let's get it. Okay, welcome back to the Coaches on Caffeine podcast. My name is Tom Frost and this is Nick Longhurst. Uh, Nick, I didn't think we'd make it back for the second week. I know, here we are. It's, here we uh, are. it's been a journey already in one, over one week. The highlight of my week, I don't know about you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's been pretty busy, so I'm keen to dive into today's one for sure. Absolutely. All right, the topic that we came up with for today is, uh, is the high-performing individual. Um, again, this is probably something that um, is quite broad reaching in what we could cover um yeah. but we've come up with a couple of questions for ourselves to sort of direct this i'm actually pretty excited to um kind of dive into this because i think both of our backgrounds we've, we've obviously worked with but also been inspired by completely different people so mm -hmm. it's it, it might be interesting to kind of compare you know the traits of of those individuals and kind of what um, relationships we can we can draw between people of completely different contexts and backgrounds so yeah absolutely yeah. it's going to be interesting because i think that there'll be a lot of similarities um but uh, across people in completely different sectors same same but different i guess absolutely so your area of interest i'd imagine i don't we didn't talk about who these people are going to be we want to come up with a few examples of yeah. people that we believe are high performers yeah we haven't spoken to each other about who's going to be each person's like, example. I don't know, but I could have a stab in the dark <laughs> yes. and say that one of yours is going to be a CrossFit athlete. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that's kind of exciting, though. Like, we genuinely have no idea who, who we're going to talk about. So, um, but yeah, I guess that's probably a pretty good segue. I guess I can kick it off. So, um, yeah, for those of you who don't... Um, know kind of what i'm about i do i i mentioned in our in our last chat that um yeah i'm pretty pretty into my crossfit training um even as a strength and conditioning coach and don't worry i don't teach my athletes to do kipping pull-ups like i keep them very very Absolutely. separate but um yeah definitely i've been kind of inspired by some not only athletes achieving great success but also coaches um to help me kind of not only with my own training and um trying to get stronger more powerful fitter but also as as my uh, as a career in coaching to kind of draw inspiration from um yeah so the first person and people are probably going um people are probably going to laugh at me for saying this but um yeah one of the big inspirations that i've I've had is uh, the fittest man on earth, four times fittest man on earth, Matt Fraser. Um, the main kind of thing that I like about Matt Fraser is he has achieved the ultimate like level of success in the sport of CrossFit. Like, there's only one other person that has been able to achieve the kind of equal level, which is a guy called Rich Freening. He won the games mm. four years running. Um, and now Matt Fraser has kind of gone and done the exact same thing. And I think a lot of people, and I definitely don't want this to be about CrossFit, but just to kind of provide some context. Like, I feel like we're probably going to be on CrossFit <laughs> for most of this podcast if I don't bloody... No, play on, play on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think um, what a lot of, like, a lot of people just kind of brush over the whole sport of fitness because of, um, like... The, the keeping pull-ups and, you know, um, the fact that they're trying to perform maximum reps in in minimum, you know, as fast as time as possible. So, you know, the domain is pretty tough, but that doesn't go anywhere close to kind of how hard it actually is. And I've been doing, doing it myself for, um, since October, 2018, and I've been taking it pretty seriously. Um, and the things that I've, gone through and experienced like during a workout is just not only um obviously physical fatigue and and, and um, pain but just mentally like being able to really kind of unlock and unleash a, a new kind of brain brain space which allows you to kind of really push yourself to that next level and just achieving things that you never thought were possible like 
being able to walk on your hands, climb ropes, do Olympic lifting, bloody swim 5Ks, like wouldn't get anywhere close to that. But just that whole great domain and one, I guess drawing it back to it, like one of the main things why I draw inspiration from Matt Fraser is because you're basically like, he's basically Superman, you know what I mean? Like mm. he can do all these facets of performance and fitness to such a high quality and he still has like, I think, you know, a lot of people when they watch like the Netflix document documentaries and whatever, like they are they are watching the physical part of it. They're watching him put 130 kegs over his head when he's doing a snatch and they're watching him like, you know, just go crazy on whatever he's doing. But um, after watching several interviews and listening to several podcasts and, and how he speaks and how he composes himself, one of the best traits I think he has is just that like it's 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 a it's not I wouldn't say a selfish attitude but just that mindset of making his goal the absolute priority and nothing is going to get in his way and I love that like there is no one that can say anything that is going to stop him from doing what he's doing and I think that is one thing that makes him so successful is because he blocks everything out mm. and his one entire focus is winning the CrossFit Games and how does he better his performance. Do you know what I mean? And he still, you know, has great relationships with people, like he's engaged and all this stuff, but like when it comes to training, that's it. And there's just nothing that can offset him because he's, that um, seed is so strong in his mind um, and I think that's really cool because, uh, and especially in Australia, I think that, you know, that whole tall poppy syndrome, like if someone is starting to achieve levels of success and other people are kind of watching that outside looking in, it's like a put down society. And I, I think that's especially in, in, strength, in a strength and conditioning context, you know, um, if someone's getting super strong, super fast, like... Whatever. I mean, we could talk about the whole. Oh, they're they're doing these amazing things. They must be taking. They must be taking performance enhancing drugs. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and that's a that's another deep dive all the time. But um, yeah, just that ability to fully block out all adversity, just and all kind of outside perspectives, and not letting that change on the inside, like not letting the outside affect the inside, I think mm. is where he really comes into his stride. Yeah. Um, I think that, um, uh, that that trait that you just mentioned there is definitely something that I was going to bring up in mind is like, it doesn't seem to matter who you are or what it's about, but that the purpose that they have is so goddamn solid in their mind yeah. that the resilience to all of the crap, like, like it's bullshit that comes when you do become a high performer in some way, is like, you're exactly right. There's, it's, it's a shame that people are really trying hard to, to pull down. And bring them back down onto that level just because they can't achieve it. Right. And they're watching this one person achieve it. And it's like, you know, I, I, I think for the, pe the, the, high, the high performer, that, that would provide fuel. You know, mm. that, because that, that's more adversity and that's more people testing them saying, you can't do this, you're crazy, why are you doing this? And that would, if you look at it in one, one particular angle, that would kind of fuel and make that, that fire stronger within them. Yeah, I think that, uh, that d definitely the, the people that get to that stage, I definitely think you're right. There's a point in them that goes, no, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. Like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to prove something or someone wrong. And that becomes a bit of an intrinsic, that fire, that flame, that motivation to continue to continue striving for whatever it is. Um, and, and resilience, I'm going to keep using that word because I, and we're going to talk later on about what we perceive as our strengths and weaknesses um, based off these conversations we have today. Yeah. But... Um, I think that there's that, that level there where high performers are in, so intrinsically motiv motivated yeah. by the fact that they want to be better every single goddamn day mm. that it can become a positive and a negative in the way that if you're not resilient, 
you can become so hard on yourself that you don't get back up from it, you know what I mean? Like you continuously beating yourself down to get better, which is great because I think that a lot of high perform, like great if it's done properly, because a lot of high performers get there, right? Like they're yeah. so hard on themselves. What happened today and yesterday was not good enough. Like I need to be better tomorrow. And Matt Fraser, like there's only one way you keep winning. It's by keep getting better because there's going to yeah. be younger people that are coming through and you know what, they're quickly going to take your mantle you know, yeah. take you from the mantle pretty quick. So, um, but I think that's like one thing that he is really good at addressing is just facing his weaknesses head on because and mm. getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, yeah. right? Like, he is okay to admit and open up about the fact that he's not good at chest to bar pull ups under fatigue, whatever. Like, he's he pulls too early with his uh, elbows during a snatch. So, like, he doesn't. But, um, do you know what I mean? Like, he is okay to say to himself, this is my weakness, and I'm going to get stronger by doubling down on trying to improve those weaknesses. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think that a lot of people in life uh, just accept the mediocre thing. They accept the fact that, oh, this average job that they don't love but they don't hate and they pay them not amazing money but they've still got a roof over their head and they're stable like and they're comfortable in that environment and they're happy there but it's like are they achieving really what they want to achieve no but and i think a big part of that is looking yourself in the mirror and saying to yourself like how truly how am i going to get there and you have to be brutally honest with yourself it's like I'm not good at this thing. Mm. And when you kind of accept that and realize that, okay, this is a weakness that I need to develop. Like, and it doesn't even have to be in a CrossFit strength and conditioning context. You could be, you want, you could have wanting to build up and be like the CEO of a company, but you're like really bad at public speaking mm. or something like that, you know, and being able to just be brutally honest and open with yourself and being like, this is a weakness. This is what I need to work on to improve and going for it. Like, I think that's massive and that, that intrinsic, like you were saying before, that intrinsic motivation to kind of know that nothing is going to set them off their goal and their path. I think that's massive and definitely one of the massive big traits in these high performers for sure. Yeah, I think that um, I've got a million things going through my head right now from what you just said. One of them, I listened to uh, Jocko Willink, the audio book of his book, um, Extreme Ownership, on the fly back home uh, a couple of weeks ago. And man, it just clicked for me. Mm. It's like, wow, in this day and age when, even for us, you know, finally stepping up to do this, I know intrinsically for myself that to get myself in front of the camera to do this stuff, I kept making excuses, you know, like how long were we talking about this for? Yeah, it was a, it was a while. It's been a, a slow burn. Right. Definitely. Well, I don't know about you. You're, you're more confident than me, obviously. But, <laughs> um, like for me, it's about, you know, putting yourself out there. It's amazing if you're not resilient to what the, what the crap that you're going to get because you're going to get crap. Oh, all the time. Like man. you cop it. Oh, yeah. You cop it. Oh, like, no, it's all right. the time. Like... You and your Insta, mate. Yeah, I've been trying to build my Instagram page up because I see it as a great opportunity to network and to help build businesses and whatever and to spread my message. And, and those reasons are so strong to me. But like, you know, I bought a tripod and I started filming all my workouts and all the boys were just giving me shit for it. And like, that's, that's funny and, it, and it's fine and whatever. But like, to me, like... I don't care what they think because the the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing are so strong to me and I'm like, that's enough. And it yeah. doesn't matter what they say and it doesn't matter what people like are telling me. It's just like, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to do it. And it's just generally speaking, it's your life. Yeah. And you choose what you want to do because you thought about it in your head and you want to go go through with that. And it's like why would you second guess just because of what other people say? Yeah. You know, and that's something that I think is the difference between being mediocre and not happy 
and successful and kind of like achieving what you want to achieve. It's just, I think letting go is a big part. Like letting, and Matt Fraser talks about this. He was saying that like, when you get to the stage where you fully let go of what other people are telling you and what other people are thinking and you, and, and it truly has zero impact on you and emotionally you're not affected by it whatsoever. Mm. That's when you're just in that Zen state and it's like, yeah. go for it. You and that, there's and some, that's strong. That's there's powerful. A, yeah, for sure. I think that it, like, it's only clicked for me a couple of times and like, I keep, you keep, you keep fall, I keep falling back into it. Like, you know, into the crap and getting, <laughs> getting pulled down by it because I'm human. And like, one of the people that I've been listening to just recently, who, who I would suggest is one of my examples of a high performer is, um, is Jordan Peterson, and that guy, um, you, you don't know of him, <laughs> it's a, in um, but he's a, he's a clinical psychologist, he's, a, he's an absolute brainiac, he's smart beyond measure, yeah. and like, this guy has absolutely broken down the why, like, he, he clinically explains, like, psychologically, through evolution and everything, why this stuff is so important, but he'll also explain, you know, that it's, why the opposite occurs so why do people why is it that we we get offended by what the group are saying you know like by those people that are trying to pull you down why is why does that occur well that's really really interesting you just said that so the kind of another person that i wanted to speak about as a high performer is a is a coach now and he's he's a guy called ben ben burgeon i think is how you pronounce his last name he coach some of the CrossFit Games athletes, so I'm drawn from that source again, but he speaks about um, the fact that it's a survival mechanism. Like, you want to be accepted as a part of the group because you don't want to get kicked out of the group because that's how you survive, and based on that hierarchy of needs, mm. like, that social acceptance is is paramount. Like, it's that's really important. So, if you can find a way to kind of have the best of both worlds, then, you know, I think that's what a lot of people are going for. But I guess the other thing is that you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know what I mean? Like people, the more popular you get and the more um, exposure that you get and the more successful you are, the more people are going to notice that and yeah. the more people are going to want to inter- like say something about that. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Because, yeah. because they can. Jordan Peterson is a great example of that. Like, he brings it up. And I think about... I, the reason that a lot of people click to him is because of that reason. He talks about the fact that... That, that iron that you just mentioned, like, you you feel comfortable to to be a part of the group. And that what that can do is it can draw you down. So instead of wanting to progress because you, you make yourself more evident to more people, yeah. which means more people that maybe want to bloody get you back down to that level of mediocrity, as you call it. And let's, let's, let's go after this and suggest that there are some people that, that don't, aren't chasing high performance because, oh, and that's because exactly psychologically right. that's a stress, man. Like, oh, that's, absolutely. Like, and that's, that's, I think that's really important to, to highlight is that this... Um, you know, pe- some, some people are, are really happy doing whatever it is that they want to do, and and like they don't they don't want to exactly how you said they don't want to pursue that being the fittest man on earth. They don't want to coach some of the best athletes in the world. Like they are happy doing what they're doing because of empowering other people and whatever the reasons are. But like mm-hmm. this is this um, this path isn't for everyone because it's so difficult. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to throw I'm going to throw it out there because it, my passion in this area has come from the fact that I think I, I'm, I'm okay with that. That those people that want that, that aren't comfortable in chasing, you know, the, the elite level people that we're going to talk about as, as we see as high performers. I'm okay with you know people. We say mediocrity. I think that that can be seen in a bad light. Like life, you know, like not chasing high performance doesn't need to be mediocrity like this is a spectrum i think we'll talk about yeah. like where you sit where i have an issue and where i worry about the future now that i've got a kid i think this is more you know like I, I, this stuff affects me more is 
when that becomes toxic, when that mediocrity, that, that side of the spectrum becomes toxic, mm. and this is where I'm going to go full circle on your social media thing because I'm really worried about what the social media thing is doing, creating toxicity. Oh, for such. sure. And like, um, yeah, being surrounded by people that are a bad influence on you and kind of making you think certain ways. Like we've, we've all heard the stories about Instagram famous models that say a certain thing or post in a certain way and they just get absolutely obliterated. And I mean, in some really, really nasty cases, it's ended in people committing suicide. Like, I mean, that's, it can't get more toxic than that. You know what I mean? So it's definitely, um, kind of dangerous territory in, in the, I can talk about that spectrum on the complete other side of the spectrum there are, it can go both ways, you know, but I think as long as you are staying true to what it is that you want to achieve, whatever that is, mm. you know, and you're right, we shouldn't define it as mediocre because people want different things. Not everyone, like we said, not everyone wants to be a high performing individual. So I think that as long as, I mean, if, if you want to have a take home, like as long as you are doing things that you are passionate about, and spending time doing things that make you happy, like, that's it. Where the sum total of what you're doing results in the betterment of the society, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and not the opposite. Yeah. Go for your life. Yeah. You know, as long as it's not the other side of things. And I'm going to go back quickly to that um, to that spectrum that we talk about, because I think that while, while you were talking through it, I think a thing clicked for me in my head is like, with the acceleration of this um, of this social media scenario, I think that that spectrum is 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 getting a bigger divide. Like the people that are okay to be resilient, and and to to like you said, uh, was it Fraser suggested like that Zen state when you just don't really care what people think, yeah. or you're okay with you're resilient enough to go, you know what. I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't really care what what you're saying, man, because you know what, I, like my purpose is strong enough that I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Um, that divide is starting to get greater. And and hear me out on this. If years ago when it didn't exist, when it wasn't there for you in your hand, like look at this, we're, we're videoing off a phone and put the phone in front of us, and it, everything's there, and that yeah. never used to be the case, and like. You're scrolling through your social media or whatever it is. Now, Nick Longhurst with 10,000 followers on Insta, like if I'm watching what you're putting up and and, and that's not all of your life, there's other things that don't, right? There's a lot of things that don't go on there. Of course, like, I mean, and that's so funny, like the highlight reel of Instagram is, you know, people, and I'm trying to be as real and vulnerable and as I can, but... Yeah, a lot of a lot of pages out there. It's like just all the PBs they're hitting and all the amazing places that they're traveling to and blah blah blah. Yeah. But like, that's not reality, I don't think. And maybe that's a reason why the gradient is becoming so large is because um, it's painting this picture of something that's kind of in a lot of people's eyes unachievable, correct, and fake, correct. You know? Well, yeah, they said that what I was getting at is that you don't, you didn't have that previously. You know, you might have watched the news and the news would plug somebody who'd done something spectacular and, and that was great, but now you've got hundreds and thousands and millions of bloody in your, in your hand <laughs> yeah. or across multiple different platforms yeah. where it's like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Like, and here's so and so, like, oh, mate, winning the CrossFit Games four years in a row and then, like, flicking through and then you've got some Insta models and you're like, Jesus, look at the body that they're bloody carrying yeah. on with and yeah. here I am, you know, whatever. And yeah. you're like, yeah. when you think, that's not reality. Like, that's not reality. This is the top 1% and that's that's 1% of what their life is too. Yeah, they're not. exactly. And so what I'm getting at there is like, you see that and I think that the divide is getting bigger and where I really, the, one of the reasons for me in doing this and like actually getting this up online is like, I think that there needs to be a click for some more people. Like we need more people to get that jump from like 
like where the draw can be too much, like where you see that stuff and it's like, I could never be that because like, it, because it's not it's so far fetched for people at that point in time. You're yeah. like, it's fake and God knows what it took them to get there. Oh, and that's so paramount what you just said. Like, I think that when people see, people are looking at the 1%, you know, mm. people see Matt Fraser, and I'm going to keep using him as an example, like they see Matt Fraser as the four times fittest man on earth, which he is, amazing, like, and that's why I've drawn a lot of inspiration from him, but they see the one week of his whole year, mm. one week, it's not even a week, it's like four days or five days of competition or something. And that's all they see and they and they try to, um, you know, do stuff that he's doing in their training. But what they don't see, they're looking at that 1% of mm. his whole year, mm. you know. They don't see all, and he says this, they don't see all the grueling training sessions that he's doing by himself. They don't see all the injuries that he's dealing and all the niggles that he has with his body. They don't see, like, how beaten he is all the time. Mm. And it's like... Those are the things that you have to endure if you want to kind of reach the the top of the mountain, mm. you know. But I think one thing that I've been getting a lot of fulfillment out of is kind of appreciating the fact that um, we're going to, like, I love to use the mountain as, as this analogy, mm. right? Like, Sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I think that happiness true happiness is not at the top of the mountain like a lot of people mm. think it is like oh i'm gonna be happy in my job when i earn when more money happens, yeah. when this happens my mum says this like don't be a life will be better when person mm. life will be better when i'm driving this new car life will be better when i buy my house life will be whatever like life is good as it will is 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 as good as you are making it right now. Yeah, that's exactly right. And yeah. that's where the happiness is. It's it's in the journey. It's in the process of waking up and enjoying going to work. It's in the process of what going to the gym every day and hanging out with your mates and doing a workout together because that's what you genuinely love doing. Mm. And I, I think if as long as you are following what you are passionate about, that's it. Yeah. That's the end game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because, and if you look at it this way, like, again, Matt Fraser, <laughs> I've said his name like 50 times by now. But, That's all right, I'll get but, to some of mine soon. Have a think about <laughs> it. Like we've got three days for the <laughs> podcast. Think about this, like, it's almost, it's almost as if the result or reaching the top of the mountain, mm. getting the fittest man on earth trophy is the byproduct that's the byproduct yeah, of the enjoyment of that process that leads up to it because, I mean, the result, the competing at the games is the 1%, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I that's think, spot on. Can I, I, I just want to jump in on that one because I think that uh, one of the traits of high performers is, um, and, and I shared this a couple of weeks ago, is they don't spend much time on, on, on what's occurred in the past. I mean, but what they do do well is they'll review, they'll review what has occurred, whether it be good or bad. So they'll review it. And once they've reviewed it, they'll take from it what they can if they're a really good high performer. And like you said before, they're okay with their weaknesses. So they've, they've understood their weaknesses from reviewing what they've done well or not so well in the past they'll take from that and they're trying to get better in themselves every single day on those weaknesses but then they, they then they stay there that's the past and that's done mm. and what they're looking for is that why that next that what's next what's next what's next mm. how can i get better now hear me out on this i where that falls short for people as well is is the what's next and I'm going to put my hand up for this later on in the in the weaknesses for myself in my personal traits is like you can quickly get caught up in what do I need to do what's next what's on this what what's on the journey next 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 and Eckhart Tolle The Power of Now is one of my favorite books of all time and I'm, I'm, I will read it again and again because it just makes you click and what you just said before like that this is it 
Like the, right now, this is it. I mean, We're doing this because we love this shit, man. It's, We're it's, to it. it's your life. And you are going to do the things that you want to pursue in your life. It's in your hands. Mm. And don't let other people stray you off that because, I mean, if you're not liking the particular road that you're going down, change the road so that you are enjoying it. So then, like, you are enjoying your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I, the, the, that, what I was getting at with, with always looking to the future is like, do it. You've got to have that why. You've got to have something that you're reaching for because that's where otherwise you slip back beyond mediocrity to toxicity and beyond if you don't have a purpose for why you're doing what you're doing. Oh, yeah. But, but be here now in this process of getting better every single day because otherwise all of a sudden you're bloody 40, 50, God, who's going to be listening? <laughs> I've got to have 100 and you're like, where's it gone? You know, like, what, yeah. what, what, why did I, where did that all go? And, um, yeah, I think that like that's, that's been a big one for me in the last, the last couple of years, especially is like, it can quickly, it can quickly just be like, it's gone and the time's gone and you're like, where did that go? What, mm. what, what happened there? I think um, um, what you were saying about knowing your why is the reminder of how you're going to get that happiness and how you're going to get fulfillment in whatever it is that you're doing mm. because you're right, like people constantly set the bar higher and I definitely experienced this when I was going through my internship, like it, like it was unpaid, it went for a, a long time and then it took me, you know, from starting there to getting into the company to getting a full-time role and now mm. I'm like, you know, and I got into the habit of always being like, okay, cool, I've achieved my goal, what's next? And then I hit that goal and it's like, okay, cool, I've achieved this goal, man, what's next? And it's like, that is kind of a bad habit to get into because you're always thinking about the future and you're not enjoying what's happening right now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I we, had, we had a sit down. We had a sit down about that. <laughs> and yeah. you don't remember any of these probably because of what I've just spoken about. Like you're always what's next. But that, that stuck for me, one of those catch-ups when you've oh, first yeah. gone full-time. And that is a, a, a lesson that I've really learned over that time is it doesn't always have to be about what's next. Mm. It's like, yeah, ha know your why. Have your big goal and, and always in the back of your mind. But like, and you know that if you work hard, you're going to and you're gonna get there. But I mean, as long as you're enjoying the way, yeah. then you're definitely going to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, you just reminded me while you were talking about it. I used to, uh, I read a book called The Miracle Morning uh, by Hal Elrod, and I, I touched on it a bit with you before. Um, but he goes through uh, the acronym of SAVERS and, and then your morning routine. Um, one of them being the affirmations, and, and I'm not great at this. I, I, again, this is all the stuff that I used to think was fluffy, and now I'm like, Jesus, I can see the power in it. Visualization, another thing I'm terrible at, but the power of it is unbelievable. Um, and one of my affirmations was was surrounding that um, you are doing the best that you can every single day. Like because I needed that affirmation for myself, based on what we said about resilience. Because like I'd get hard on myself that I wasn't doing enough to get better, and and so it's like you are doing the best that you can. What more can you do other than that? You know, like just keep doing the best that you can every single day. So it was you're doing the best that you can every single day. Um, however, I'm, like I will continue to get better every single day and I will enjoy the process mm. of getting better every single day. Yeah. And just saying that in my head over and over and, then, and, and like it just started to click after a while. I was like, oh yeah, shit. Like mm. I'm actually getting up every single day. I'm not getting up not trying to do my best. Like every day I'm trying to do my best and complete irony that if I get up and I'm like, I, you know, I'm shit at this, I'm shit at that, I, I didn't do this well, and then well, what happens for the rest of that day? Well, then I don't do anything well again because I'm like so down on myself about the fact that I didn't do that. And, and you know, it takes us forever to get this, this going because it's like, well, this is what I don't do well, don't do well. It's like more people need to be comfortable and resilient and have some self-compassion for themselves so that they actually start to unleash 
their strengths and share them with the world. And um, I think, and I mentioned him before, that coach Ben Bergeon, one of the things that he talks about in, time, in terms of like unleashing your strengths and kind of um, unlocking that, you know, journey towards reaching the potential that you want to do is like, don't don't waste your time and your energy thinking about things that are completely out of your control. Mm. Like focusing and doubling down on the things that you have direct control over, which is choosing what you want to do. And then when adversity comes up, choosing how you respond to that mm. adversity. And that's it. That's, that's, that's the choice that you have and the decisions that you make along the way obviously dictate who you are as a person, but also where you can go in your life. And mm. I think there's so much power in that and that whole like Matt Fraser letting go thing. Like when he lets go and when you let go of all the external mm. and just focus on things that you can have control over, things you are passionate about, that's it. Yeah. Good luck. And take that, extreme ownership of that. Yeah, and that is that is enjoying the journey. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think you kind of um, sparked me when you were saying before, um, one of the things that can lead towards um, developing those really good traits is forming good habits, right? Mm. Like we've spoken about that drill sergeant army guy who talks about the first thing that he does when he wakes up is, make, is he makes his bed. Mm. And the reason why he does that is because in his brain, he's achieved something. He wakes up and he achieves something straight away. It's small, but I mean, small things over time build momentum and they, though that those are the things that lead to bigger things. Yeah, right? for sure. And I think that's definitely something you have control over. Biting the bullet, not accepting what other people think, like making sure that your habits are positive and healthy and helping you to achieve the top of the mountain goal that you're looking at. Mm. Um, but internally as well, that's just going to continue to motivate you because you're like, have this on, on like rolling kind of feeling of, you know, getting energy from different things and accomplishing tasks and getting shit done. And yeah. it's like, that's, that's powerful too. There's power in, in that accomplishment, isn't there? Oh, for sure. For sure. But, um, and something is like, is like as simple as making your bed. Crazy. But the long-term effects that that can have. But people wouldn't, yeah. people like, I think to click to that understanding of how that actually affects you, like, God damn, if you're listening, just try it. Hey, just try it because it's unbelievable what it actually what it actually does. And Jordan Peterson, I'll go back to he 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 says, Who are you to try and um, to try and influence others, to try and have an effect or have a say on what others have to do if your house isn't in order? You know, like and that just yeah. goes back to you are in control of you. So if your room is messy, he talks about, if your room is messy and you can't even get that in order, don't tell me how to get my life in order. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. God, there's some truth in that. Like oh, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a physical, that's see, that you can see that and like you can feel that. And, and you know, I think about it right now, what's my house looking like? Probably <laughs> a bit of a, a shit show at the moment. But <laughs> like I got to a point where I have to be getting up early to go to work and, and can't make the bed because my wife's still asleep and so just pull the sheet and then but you know if they're still washing up or if, if my 10 month old are throwing shit around the lounge room or whatever you know like the power in just tidying up as the first yeah. thing done in the morning washing the dishes before it's done in the morning not just that and I'm going to sound funky here but like washing the dishes like man that can be therapeutic <laughs> I'm dead serious <laughs> sit there and just just enjoy the process of what you're doing like yeah. man I was washing the car the other day and I'm going to set they're going to lock me up and put me in a row here but washing the car the other day and it's like man I, I did that myself and the gratitude that I had was like there's people in the world that don't even have a car yeah. that don't even have transport Yeah. To get, because I spent that time actually being present washing my freaking car mm. I was like holy crap and then the, 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 it's like the world looks a different colour because like, yeah. I'm friggin' washing my car. Mm. And that might sound crazy, but it's like in this day and age, when 
everything's given to you on a silver platter. It's there, Netflix. Up, you know, you don't even have to wait for your show to come around the next week because just go and bloody per, what do you call it? Purge it. What back to back to back to back to back? Watch your episodes. Uh, yeah. What do you call it? Um, Netflix and chill. Oh, you know. What <laughs> And sit there and just watch your bloody... And I'm guilty of it. Like, we all are. Yeah, yeah. It's there. We don't have to fight for anything anymore. And I, and, and that's that's where the divide's getting more as well, I think, is like, it's quick to become toxic because life's too hard. I'm seeing this stuff on socials and blah, 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 blah. And here's Netflix and Insta and all these things where it's like, I can have whatever the hell I want. Google Home. Do mm. you know how long I put off download like having that in my house and now it's like hey google i was the same tell me that what's the temperature like now i don't even go i don't even go on spotify like it used to be as hard as clicking on my ue boom which would automatically sync bluetooth to my phone it's just selecting a song no i don't even do that anymore yeah because now google does it for me hey google play play this song so and so it's play this podcast it's just instant for sure isn't that crazy yeah and I've gone off on a tangent there, but little things like washing the goddamn car and stopping for two seconds and going, what am I doing right now? Holy crap. Like I think the yeah. coolest, one of the coolest mantras I've ever heard from Ben Burgeon, hence the high performer, is he says, and it's so simple, but it really just opens your mind to exactly what you've just said and that whole notion of enjoying the process and he says this he says change um i have to into like i can do that i can't remember exactly damn i can't remember exactly how what he said. i know what you're gonna say but he says um yeah. change situations where you go oh i have to do this into i'll oh, say that's right change situations from I have to do this into I get to do this. Yeah, that's huge. Right? Like change I have to is into I get to this. Mm. And I think that in itself is so important because it, it, it does open your mind to what you have and what you're doing and, and just kind of appreciating where you are and being grateful for the people in your life and whatever. Like just it, kind of being open to that and not being so closed off to, oh, I have to wash the dishes, I have yeah. to clean the car, like, I get to do those things. Yeah. Cool, right? That's huge. That's huge. I think that my, I think that I got to this level of passion, in it, and I could be wrong, it could, could have been who I was going to be as a human anyway, but the opportunity to live in PNG and to see the other side as such, like, there's a lot of people that there that live... Man, the, the minimum wage there when I was there went up to one Australian dollar an hour. Like it went up to the, the equivalent of a dollar fifty Australian, possibly. And just wrap your head around that mm. for a second. Dollar fifty an hour. Like are these people are living yeah. in. I was driving in um, when I first got picked up, and I, I was in the car going from the airport, and I had the window down, and I was like a shaggy dog out the window with my phone videoing like oh my god like it's all dirt on the side of the road and there's you know there's people that have got like i was like oh what's that tarp doing there and like and the guy's driving with me goes that's where they live and i'm like yeah. and he said and wind your window up and get your phone back in the window because you won't have it long if you don't mm. and here's me you know like as a 24 year old 23 24 year old who's like completely blinded to how other people live because i live in this little bubble of of entitlement really like and i think i was a decent kid like i might have been a bit of a shit in certain places mum would absolutely attest to that but <laughs> like what a just brain like a a complete mind opener mm. like and i came back like from the first my first stint over there and i just remember talking to people going you know what we could, we could say the whole, this is going completely left the field, but you can bring it back in a second. This is what I'm here for. Um, <laughs> I, I remember coming back passionately going, the Australian legal system needs to flip on its head. Like, why do we have um, junior, why do we have under-18s incarcerated in Australia where they're locked up and they've probably still got bloody Xboxes and shit anyway? Send them to some third world country to spend a week so that they understand 
because they just don't understand it. Because I don't think. I think, like what you were saying when we've spoken about your experiences in PNG, that was like the people were some of the warmest, nicest, oh, friendliest humans that you've ever come across. And so that alone just highlights that the external factors that people put so much pressure on themselves to achieve like mm. money, mm. it just doesn't matter. It doesn't. And it actually, it actually doesn't it matter. Does, it does the opposite is what it does. It, yeah. It absolutely does the opposite. And there was one, I, I want to share this because there was one that sticks with me, this one, one point in time where I was like, Wow. I, I'd gone to a village outside of Port Moresby for um, a bride price, which is an offering when a, when a woman's getting married, they, the husband's side has to pay money to the family. Anyway, um, out, outside, and it was a village, and um, I'd gone out there and we were you know, watching all of the this, um, craziness that goes on with it, like the big party, and then we just went for a walk down to the, down to the water, and like there's shacks built over the water it's gorgeous but like it's 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 low socio really low socio mm. and um and there's these kids there and i was like oh what are they doing and there's there was obviously like a consistent cross breeze that blew off the ocean uh, in this village and um there were a bunch of kids running around smiles from ear to ear and i was like what's going on here and they had the um the circular, you know, the plastic bits that, that are on Coke bottles or on any... Oh, yeah, like the lids. Yeah. No, 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 like the, the plastic bit that actually... The, the advertising... Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they'd like pulled them off but kept them as like a cylindrical right. shape. Yeah. And so it's just like plastic yeah. cylinder. Mm. And what they were doing was they'd start at one point at like over here and then 10 to 15 metres away they'd set up like some goals. Yeah. And on go, they'd let go of their little... You know, they'd have the mark, their little coat thing, plastic <laughs> thing. Yeah. And the cross breeze would blow it and it'd roll and they had to get it through the goalpost. And the first to get it through, well, they were actually betting like a little bit of money, which I thought was hilarious too. But like the first to get it through would win the pot. Yeah. And I was like, these kids were happy as pigs in shit. They were so goddamn happy. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And that's, uh, yeah, to me, that just... Oh, highlights the fact that yeah you really don't need all the external stuff that as a society we paint up that you do need do you know what i mean it's like as long as yeah you are enjoying what you're doing in your life and the people that you're surrounded by yeah. that's it yeah that's that's happiness yeah so, money is money is really a means to an end in that sense isn't it like mm -hmm. It, it's a it's a necessary evil yeah. and, and yeah another definitely. one of my passions is that people um people say money is is evil and, and money is the root of all evil and all that sort of stuff and i don't think that that's right and hear me out on this because money is not the root of all evil if it wasn't money it'd be something else right like it used to be the trade of flour and salt and whatever else and like we as the humans are the ones that create the evil yeah from it like it's just that that's our bartering system mm -hmm. so don't blame mum, money because that that's not it that's not that's not what it is yeah. um i think that we've created it by the fact that we we as humans have this innate there's a little bit of evil in all of us like that that gets us to that point where we like and you know um extreme ownership we, we blame money it's like it's money's fault money's just paper yeah or, or like, it's just an idea that kind of we've as humans have created and it's definitely led to kind of a lot of negative traits for sure mm. so, but yeah so what do you think um what are our take homes today well i, I think that um that we we've I've sort of touched on one of um, one of my high performers, and we've sort of dealt around different traits um, of of these people, um, some pros and cons. I, I still think that um, we haven't really touched on our strengths and weaknesses in this area, and and I haven't really. I've only mentioned one of my high performers. Um, I, I'd just like to throw it out there. One one of mine that we haven't mentioned yet is um, is Elon Musk. And 
when we started this at the start, I knew that you were going to be from the CrossFit side of things, mm. um, and mine from the um, more so from the business side of things. Um, Elon Musk is uh, like him to me is one of the, the most successful people in history, and like. If you don't know what he's done, he started five or six different businesses and they, like their sole purpose is Tesla, right? Like, you know, Tesla, mm. Tesla, right? They're like electric cars because he's got a purpose of ridding the world of, of the, um, of, of burning fossil fuel. So like he wants to get rid of petrol and diesel cars and stuff through electricity. Now, of course that requires <laughs> renewable energy for electricity eventually, but, um, you know, the, I read his book and the, the ups and downs that that guy goes through talking about the resilience that, that was required to get to that point. Yeah. Like that guy was sleeping on people's floors mm. two and three points in his life and like going for more and more funding so that he could pay his staff to survive and he wasn't paying himself. He was out on his ass. Like he had nothing, but his purpose was so goddamn important. Mm. And what a big purpose, like, and, to um, try and fix the world, pretty much, because no one else is doing it. Steve Jobs is very similar, if you've seen the movie. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, and he, um, sorry, no, no, he's not the one I'm thinking of. Um, Dyson, the guy who does Dyson vacuums, oh, yeah. he created, it was something like 2,500 prototypes before he got accepted into the market and they were happy to sell his bagless vacuum cleaner because he knew he loved that product and he just knew it would work and he tried time and time and time and time and time again to get to that end result but like i mean if that's not resilience and i think it was over a 10 year period or something that he just kept rejected after rejection but because his his goal was so strong and he's his intrinsic motivation was so uh, powerful on his actions. Mm. Like that was the thing that just kept him in the loop and kept him going and um, kept him passionate about it. And he got there eventually. Like yeah. after that such amount of time and I mean, so many people told him he couldn't do it and that was a bad idea, but look at him now making millions and it's crazy, right? Yeah. I think that, that that to me like one of the, my favorite sayings there is that the truest one of the truest definitions of failure is to give up yeah like that you that how else do you fail there's people, heaps of people that would have thought that they were failures in the past like elon musk out on his ass like you could have told him that he was a failure at that point in time mm. before tesla got off the ground when he told people that he was going to create a rocket that would go to space and would land and be reusable, people wrote him off like no tomorrow. Like he could have been considered a failure at that point had he have stopped. Mm. Right? So quitting. Yeah. Like he didn't quit. Yeah. And I think the that whole notion of adversity, overcoming adversity, like <laughs> overcoming adversity is the thing that makes life interesting. For sure. You know, like having those challenges and making and different people questioning your journey and your your route um, is like the definitely the the fuel that I believe um, keeps keeps people going for sure and, and, and looking at adversity not as like a ch the impossible task but looking at it as like an opportunity and, and really embracing that opportunity mm. no matter how hard it is yeah but looking at it as an opportunity to kind of improve different aspects of your life like yeah i think that's how we learn that's how we develop and grow as people you know by like, truly taking that on board i, I like to um yeah, you've you've absolutely set me up there i like to think of it as adversity being like the the facilitator the the catalyst for upshifting your level of what was normal does that make sense like mm -hmm. so today this is normal but like we overcome something and then tomorrow that's like 
that, that's easy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm. holy crap, that was easy. And one of the books that I read or podcast was talking about, um, I think Shark Tank, that, that, uh, the TV show that picked, again, businesses, entrepreneurs, um, they interviewed one of the guys who's like the investors and he, he invested in like 30 companies and like 27 of them or something, I can't remember the stats. Like flunked out. So, no, 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 27 of them are female CEOs. Oh. And like they're asking him, how, how did that make sense to you to do that? And he's like, why did you do that? And he's like, mate, when you've, when you've had a woman who's remained professional in her career and had kids and gone through all of that stuff and maintained a professional career, mm. like that level of what, what before kids, right? Like before the adversity of having to deal with life outside just going absolutely bananas mm. and maintaining a career and continuing to develop in that area he's like their level of normal now is like here yeah like and you talk to a male about that and life's hard and whatever and like yeah we can go be going through our own adversity but god damn once you've dealt with giving birth to a kid and like living through growing like building another human day in day out you're responsible for shaping their life outside sleepless nights like all this sort of stuff it's just become like the new baseline right that you didn't think was even achievable before but like you just it just happens and you just get it done you get it done yeah and and you realise what you're capable of and then you're like oh shit like as long as you take ownership of it right or you see it as an opportunity even the storm I don't quit camp Right. Do you want to just touch on that? Yeah. yeah well, that's uh, that's coming up this weekend for our for our under twenties boys, um, and that's exactly right. That this is that's the purpose of it. That's the purpose of it. Like, shit's going to get real uncomfortable because it does in sport. It does in life, mm. and I think that if we can facilitate adversity where uncomfortable is accepted and overcome then the level of normal now is like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And I've spoken to a few of our boys that are in the pathway that have been on the actual, the storm IDQ camp. Man, the stuff that they tell you about what they did and yeah. what they went through yeah. and, and the way, not just that, but the way that they talk about it, I'm like, that changed you. And basically, just to provide context, the, the storm auto quick camp is the... The, a three-day camp what that they put the players through to build resilience and really define their purpose of why they want to be a part of that team and they just put them through like military military commandos take over and they get them to do like you know you were saying holding like a, a battle rope over their heads neck deep in water for like half an hour and they don't they don't sleep for three days and all this stuff and um i remember you were telling me that and I'm sure, you know, from speaking to some of the players as well, like just being, as, like we're speaking about establishing that new baseline, just really getting appreciation of like, I had no idea what I was capable of until mm. I went through that thing, mm. you know? Yeah, when I spoke to this player in particular the other day, like like I was saying, you just, you could see it in, in his eyes and you could feel it and you're like, that changed you for the better and... And the way he, he said to me, he's like, training now, he's like, it, what I used to think hurt, like that, he's like, I, I know what I'm capable of now. It's like, it's unlocked a complete oh, yeah. understanding where it's like before I thought that that's my limit, like I, I can't, that's it. And then excuses come beyond that yeah. and like unlocking that new level of potential, not just for, for them to then be like epic footballers, rugby league players, like, but the Storm have a, they have a, they have one of the best cultures and hence why they've been one of the top teams for the last bloody 20 odd years or more. Like, that's a team of high performing individuals. This is a team of high performing individuals who year after year, you know, even when they went through the adversity of the salary cap stuff and whatever, everyone again, writes them off because oh, you won't do it now that you're not cheating, blah, 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 like. Sorry, bang, next year, like, I can't remember, premiership or minor premiers, minor premiers, minor premiers. You can bring whoever the hell you want into that system. Mm. That is a reproducing system of high-performing individuals. Now, 
Craig Bellamy can ask for whatever the hell he wants because he's worth it. Like if you can become a high performer to that extent where you can create high performance, where you can facilitate people to just unlock a new level of normal continuously to become high performers, to, to have a great culture of like, but we work out of Amy Park, like we deal with all of the squads and stuff. You, you know where the Melbourne Storm players coming through because the, the gratitude that they show, the, 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 you know, it's a thing for them that they, they, they will introduce themselves to you. They, yeah. they know the cleaner's name by, you know, like. I think out of all the pro teams that work within the Amy Park facility, like, and the, the inter the athletes that I've had interactions with, like the Storm players are definitely, um, they don't take what they have for granted. Absolutely. And Absolutely. they, they, you know, are there to, um, in the position they are in, they're there to not only achieve their goals and as a team fulfill out and win games, win footy games, but like they will stop and have a chat and they mm. will, you know, yeah, like you said, they know the cleaners out and they'll clean up after themselves. They don't let yeah. the fact that they're earning hundreds of thousands of dollars keeping a footy around, let them stray away from the fact that they need to be a good human being. Humility. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably another another trait. Well sweep the sheds like Richie McCaw became known for it, but um but, you know, and that's an all blacks team, god damn. Talk about high performers across life, yeah. like a lifetime. That, mm. You know, they, so they're the ones who sort of got known for it. But there's a lot of clubs that, well, maybe they've taken it on now that it's come to the fore a little bit more. But the Japanese soccer team at the FIFA World Cup most recently, like, you know, their rooms when they left were, were smick. They didn't need cleaners to go through because it was, like, spotless. And it's yeah. like, again, it probably comes back to what you were saying, of, you know, that the, the army general. Just to have it. Yeah. That's humility. That's, that's sort your shit. Clean your space. Look after yourself. And not in a bad way. Like, I, I talk with my wife about this and other people. It's like, we can quickly become responsible for other people and think that we're doing them good by trying to, by helping them. And, and I find this hard to communicate, so I'll try my best. But, and me worrying about you becomes a scenario where worry... Is the only thing that's occurring. Yeah. In, there's no action. Yeah. Just fix it. Yeah. Fix what you can that's in your goddamn bubble. And that's you that. think, And then I don't have to worry about you anymore. And that's that whole thing of just focus on the things you have control over. Yeah. And not letting the outside or the external, don't let the outside affect the inside. Yeah. Like just stay true to what you believe in, what you're passionate about. That's it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we touch on it. We, we, we use um, red, red zone, green zone, we've spoken about in the past. Um, red zone being everything that's out of your control. What are some of the things that are out of, out of your control? What other people think or say or do? That's completely out of your control. So, you know. Why would you waste your energy on it? Well, and we spoke about why. But, you know, it's like, like it's innate in us that we have those troubles, which yeah. is fine. Um, but you're right, like just flipping to. to to get over it, to move on with it. And then what's in your green zone? Well, the present and what's occurring right now and everything that I have control over. But also what you want to do as well. Like I still think having that goal in mind, um, in the like, you know, having having that thing to work towards is really important as well. Mm. It's not just like enjoying the everyday but not going anywhere. It's I like, like it. cycling the bike but not traveling on the treadmill yeah yeah right yeah exactly yeah I, the the one of the things that that takes me to is like you've mentioned it value is like to create you need to be, we have a responsibility for ourselves to be values to society and not the other way like you're either valuable to society and the fact that you're providing even just interactions with people being positive yeah. And not detracting from them. Yeah, because yeah. you don't know what kind of... And that's coaching, right? Like, yeah. if you're if you're in a bad mood and you're bringing that to your coaching, then what if the athletes had a bad day and then you just kind of tickle that over even more, you know? Yeah. So I think having 
um, that strong belief in kind of just trying to be as positive and optimistic all the time is the thing that's going to help other people kind of get on that train as well, you know? Yeah. Um, but being real as well, like, I think we have to appreciate the fact that life happens in ebbs and flows and it's not just this, um, yeah. the highlight reel. Yeah, that know? we so often see on, on the socials, yeah. Did you want to um, jump into strengths and weaknesses um, individually that you would suggest for yourself, like uh, based off what we've spoken about today? I oh, know I've got heaps that I can talk about. Um, <laughs> weaknesses. Yeah, so I think that my strengths definitely would tie into the fact that I know what I want to do, I'm confident in that, and I have that picture of where I want my life to go, who I want, who are the people that I want to be in my life. But, and yeah, just not letting, um, yeah, the outside opinions and the external affect what I'm doing and just constantly reminding myself that I can only really have control over my, the decisions that I make and how I respond to adversity. And I think that is, um, that's 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 powerful and that's that fuels me you know um definitely a weakness is to let it win you know like letting the external mm. the comments the things people say um the the opinions that people form like yeah it definitely can lead to you second guessing yourself and questioning yourself but my intrinsic motivation is, is greater than that and yeah, I think that's the overriding thing for me. And clearly in these high performing teams and individuals that we've discussed today, like that's definitely a common trait across all all the all the contexts that we've that we've discussed. So mm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I would suggest that like I'd like to think that one of my strengths is is in people and, and being personable. I, like I really, it's a strength and a weakness um, in the fact that I, I, I like, I, I don't like conflict as such, which can be a strength in bringing teams of people together for a common cause because there's, you know, there's a difference of opinion here and here and I think that I can possibly do that well where it's like, okay, well, I know what you want out of it and I know what you want out of it and I can bring those together to get something done yeah sometimes getting people on that same wavelength getting them on the yeah the same train for that common cause for the common cause yeah i think that that that, that is a bit of a strength of mine i think that a weakness comes in that is um is, is not in the past I, I think i'm getting better at it but worrying a little bit too much about people liking me like, does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, so that makes sense. And that goes back to what we were speaking about, that survival of the fittest, like the acceptance, trying to fit into yeah. the group because you want people to like you and you want people to be passionate about what you're doing. But, I mean, I was speaking with my dad about this last night. Like, imagine how hard it would be being the prime minister or being the president. Like, not everyone is going to like the decisions that you make. Yeah. It is impossible to win everyone over, but yeah. it's like, they're in a position of power. They're making the calls. The people put them in that position of power. So they're doing, they're going to go ahead and, and do that without worrying about the fact that they're not going to get everyone on board because yeah. they're never going to get yeah. everyone on board. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if we apply that lesson to our own lives, yeah, that's, that's massive. Like you're never going to, you're never going to win everyone over. And that's definitely a thing I've learned in coaching. It's like, because you work with so many different people, yeah. you can't get on with everyone, especially for me originally when I was going through that, that was extremely frustrating because I'm a energetic personality and I'm very extroverted and kind of upbeat. Um, the more kind of reserved, quiet athletes that yeah. I work with, don't get me wrong. I get along with, most of the people that I'm with, but there are definitely some relationships that they prefer to work with the other coach just because we just don't click. And, you know, when I, when I let go of that, because originally I was like, no, nah, I'm going to win them over. I can get them on my side. But now I've learned that 
but that's impossible. And, and when I let go of that, and I'm just sticking true to myself mm. and the people, people will organically get around that when, mm. when you kind of, yeah, let go of the idea of, oh, these people, like I can't get them on board with yeah. my message. And, you know, yeah. I think that we, yeah, we spoke about that at one point was like, you need to be a little bit of a chameleon to be successful in this job. Like, chameleons adapt to the situation the environment like being able to adapt yourself to people but you're right like at what point does that become fake mm. uh, and you, you came to a point where you're like oh this is as far as i can go before i'm not being me anymore so mm. so so love it or hate it like the biggest portion of people love it not everyone's going to love it, but I'm doing the best that I can every single day and continue to get better. Like, this is me. This is truly who I am, and mm. and and I, that's been that's been a benefit to you, definitely. Um, I think this quickly touching back on what that weakness leads to in that want for people to to like me, mm. to, to 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 not not like me. Like I, I found, and I still do. I, I still do. I don't know if it'll ever go away, but. But having tough conversations, like, you know, the reprimand meeting and whatever, and we've had a few of them, you know, like, where, where that, I just used to avoid it because it was the uncomfortable. And it's like, I know, like, I had a feeling that you, or, you know, people were going to not like me when you had that meeting. But it's like, I quickly came to understand that not having it was worse than, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, not yeah, not having that catch up, the uncomfortable was way worse. Because then change doesn't happen, and it's the same thing over and over again. But it builds, right? Because yeah. it's not that it's that two minutes of uncomfortable where you know it might be two minutes now, but and then it's like five minutes after, and then it's like oh, half an hour. It's like yeah, no, I can see what he was saying. Mm. Like in the moment, it might be bloody sweat and bun clenched, and like that's this is an ugly conversation to have. But when it's done, it's like oh. Geez, well, it's good we had that conversation and got past that because otherwise, six months, 12 months, 18 months, and you're trying to pretend like that thing is not occurring and, and it's a white elephant in the room. Well, exactly, and that's the catalyst that causes change, in most cases, for the better, right? And that's that whole idea of embracing the adversity and taking, and taking feedback on board and being able to learn from off different people and yeah you're right it's never going to be smooth sailing and we're going to probably continue to have a few more of those yeah, those sure. hard chats but like i guess we both know that it's for the better and if we can keep that as the the consistent message then we're both going to continue to grow and, and develop as people and that's i think that is definitely a big trait of the high performer like yeah, being sure. able to open mind and yeah like, and yeah. just accept things that happen like yeah. whether it's opinions of different people or just be like being open to to, to change being open to change yeah. and being open to feedback so. yeah Cheers. but yeah um let's wrap up sweet take homes where do we start there's a lot of traits there i think one of them is resilient from mine i think open-mindedness and and to, um, open-mindedness to feedback like you just mentioned um I want to I want to delve into this again in another podcast because I think that there's there's more that we didn't get to. Um, mm. So, but um, yeah, what what were some of yours? Um, just from discussing the different people that we spoke about and the different backgrounds, like one definitely um, enjoying the process, you know, enjoying yeah. the being passionate about what you're doing, and um, I think having that really strong powerful intrinsic motivation is definitely a key trait um and if you're not enjoying something then change that because yeah. that's going to fuel you to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve just yeah. just by enjoying the day to day um i think another one is creating good habits for yourself to kind of fuel that productivity um and yeah. that just that mindset of get it done get it out of the way or not even get out of the way being present yeah, and, yeah. and enjoy and fully letting stop them. avoiding it yeah um and the other one is just yeah not letting the outside affect the inside and just being knowing that you only have control over what you have control over mm. and that's it and not not wasting your time and energy 
stressing about all the other factors that are involved trying to skew you from what you're after. So it's for you. Take absolute ownership. Get Stop it. Stop making excuses. Love it. Thanks, Nicholas. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Stay. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Coaches on Caffeine podcast. For more, you can find us on YouTube and Spotify.